So now we're in the east, and again we're dealing with another city. In this case, Pergamon, which as you can see is entirely built in a German museum. Kind of odd how that works. But, like I said in an earlier chapter, the Germans tend to take a lot of stuff. Anyway, uh, Pergamon is one of the cities created after the death of Alexander the Great. And what we're looking at is the Altar of Zeus. And one of the things that you're going to notice immediately is that it doesn't look like most Greek temples. What we're seeing is influence from the East on the Greek world. Of course, you can't have one society influencing the other without some influence coming back. And we have this very complex structure. We have an elevated platform framed by this ionic colonnade. So it's a, a colonnade made up of ionic columns with projecting wings on either side. The altar would have been right inside in the middle. There is actually a little bit of open space there. Around the entire platform, the lower platform, is a frieze running just below here. And that frieze is what's particularly important because we see some 400 feet of larger-than-life figures sculpted in high relief on this piece. This will have taken an incredible amount of time. And this is much larger than what we see even at the Parthenon. The subject here is a giant tomaki, the giants versus the Olympian gods, or the titans versus the Olympian gods. And if we look at a specific piece, this is Athena. What we see is high relief in some sculptures bordering on in the round. And we see a very dynamic piece. For the first time, we're seeing that last piece of the puzzle that we've been looking for with sculpture. We're seeing emotion on the faces. And even though we see only eyes, we see emotion. We know what's going on. Here we have winged victory in the background, putting a wreath, which is missing now, but a laurel wreath on the head of Athena. Athena is grabbing one of the titans, one of the giants, as his mother, uh, a depiction of the earth goddess and mother of giants, looks up in horror. Imagine her horror because she is about to watch her child be torn limb from limb by Athena. And even though most of her face is missing, we can clearly see that horror in the eyes. The giant who's about to die seems to have accepted it, but we still get that sense of fear. Suddenly emotion has entered the picture. Not only do we have the realistic physical body, but we have emotion. And once again, you'll notice the women are generally clothed, the men are generally going to be nude. This is the Greek world. It's what we're kind of used to at this point. So we have a great deal of movement. Uh, it's very dynamic. When you look at it, it almost seems like you can imagine them very quickly moving uh, along with this scene. We also see very detailed drapery in the clothes. We see movement in the clothes as Athena's robes are being swept off in one direction as if she's grabbing him and about to twist him forward towards her shield in front of her. We see winged victory coming in from the other direction. We can tell from the direction of her clothing. So it is really a spectacular piece of Greek sculpture, but wait, it's going to get better.